In this photo, the skull of Homo habilis, a fossil hominid considered human, is on the left, and the skull of a female bonobo chimpanzee is on the right. How different are they? In this photo, Homo habilis is depicted on the left, and Homo erectus is depicted on the right. Somewhere in the differences between the last photo or this one is the difference between non-human and human. How different are these skulls? In this animation, you can see the difference between the femur bones, the thigh bones, of a gibbon, a chimp, and a human. Humans are bipedal. The other two are not. How different are their thigh bones? This animation begins with the brain of a chimpanzee and ends with the brain of a modern human. How different are they? Are these differences so great that they couldn't have evolved through the same natural processes which we observe causing changes in populations? Populations change over time. This is evolution. And it is easy to see, for example, in dogs where the changes have been very dramatic in very recent history. However, some ask whether there is a difference between, quote, microevolution, changes within uh, a group of related organisms, some like to use the word kind, uh, and macroevolution, the evolution of two different things from a common ancestor. So cats and dogs from a common ancestor of the carnivores or apes and humans from a common ancestor. What I would like you to consider here is to closely look at the differences which separate the head of a female bonobo chimpanzee and that of early hominids and then later modern humans. There are skeletal differences here and they are significant. However, I'd like you to compare this degree of difference to that which separates one dog from wolves or one dog from another dog one bear from another bear, one cat from another cat, one old world monkey from another old world monkey, etc. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is I have heard some individuals claim that, oh, dogs could descend from wolves. That's, you know, evolution within a kind. Or all monkeys could be descended from a common ancestor. That's evolution within a kind. But that humans and hominids could not have evolved from apes. They are far too different to have descended from a common ancestor. Now, while that may be true, I invite you to consider the differences which separate, say, chimpanzees and humans to that which separates different breeds of dog or one bear from another or old, one old world monkey from another. Because I believe under close comparison, it often seems that the differences which make one monkey different from another or one dog from a, different from another uh, are often far greater than the differences which separate uh, chimpanzees from early hominids and modern humans. So where does microevolution end and macroevolution begin? I invite you to consider the following videos as you answer this question for yourself.